Hi, I'm Anna. In March of 2022, I decided to leave Vancouver after almost 10 years of calling the West Coast home in search of a more fulfilling life. Join me as I start my journey traveling through Europe as a digital nomad, discovering new places, living out my foodie dreams, while doing it all on my own. Well, not totally on my own, I have this camera and you watching. So grab a cup of coffee, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let's catch up on last week's vlog. We were still in Madrid, visited the royal palace from the outside, changed my accommodations from a private room in an Airbnb to a six-person dorm, which had an epic rooftop space. And I thought breakfast was included in my booking, but turns out it's not. But no problem, because yesterday I picked up Yo Soy Choca Avena. So I believe chocolate oat milk, something like that. And then inside here I have some muesli that I had picked up when I was still on my Airbnb because when I looked at the breakfast bar, even if I wanted to pay for it, it was like cheese and meat, so we all know I'm not gonna eat that. That's fine, I'll just have some muesli and chocolate milk, and we're gonna do some work for a few hours, and then we're gonna go out and explore the city. The plan was today to edit a YouTube video for a few hours and then head to the National Historic Museum of Madrid, but my computer does not like Final Cut Pro right now. It is being so slow and glitchy and uh -uh -uh. it's impossible to edit, it's super frustrating. So I thought instead of sitting here and attempting to edit, let's flip the schedule around. We're gonna go to the museum now, which is about a 20 minute walk away from my hostel explore the museum when it's like also the hottest part of the day, have some lunch, come back, and we can always edit later on the rooftop bar. So let's go to the museum. We are sitting in a courtyard. We're going to the Museo del Prado. Absolutely stunning day. I still have my sweater just over top to help not get like burns from my arms. But someone asked me what's one of the biggest culture, culture shifts that I'm noticing in Spain that maybe I'm not used to or is different. And I think it's just the time. In front of me, we have a beautiful cathedral. The mass for Easter this evening is not until 10 p.m., whereas I'm familiar with a Saturday mass being at like 5 or 6 p.m. So I think that's just kind of the difference. I'm noticing that everything's a little bit like two to three hours shifted later. So eating lunch at 3 p.m. has become quite a normal here. And perhaps it's because of the sunlight, which I can't even see. <laughs> and I will have to find myself a hat because I didn't pack a hat. You will see that in the packing video. I did put on sunscreen today because I am muy blanco. This skin is fresh and it could be crisped right away. All right, we've entered Museum del Prado. I had to draw my backpack off. You're not allowed to bring your bag in, but it's free to check it and you just get a card. They put it through security put anything in your pockets through security as well and there's no photos or videos allowed so you have to use your imagination but I'm off to go explore. Two hours later. I give that museum like an 8.5 out of 10. It was only 15 euros which is pretty understandable and if you're studying the fine arts or you're a student you can get in for free. It was really good. It had lots of um, paintings and sculptures as far back as before Christ but most of them are kind of 
1400s to 1800s. I do not know my art history well enough, but I was very fascinated with some of the oil paintings and the level of detail and just like, it was, I didn't believe it was a painting. Anyway, it's nice and open, but similar to the Louvre in Paris, you just kind of get lost. So I don't know if I actually saw it all. Some areas were just a bit too busy. And they also have a second copy of the Mona Lisa. So it seems to be the, the second, I guess, replication that Da Vinci did where he changed some of the background to it. So that was kind of interesting to see the Mona Lisa. Not so like in the Louvre, it's really hard to actually see it because it's so busy. Hello friends, it is currently Saturday night on Easter long weekend. It is 10 p.m., 10.01 to be exact. I am currently sitting in my hostel room editing a video. <laughs> and I feel it's important to share this because I think, especially as a solo traveler, there is expectation that every night is a party, an event, a celebration of a city, of a happening, and I think as a solo travel, especially female, I'm very conscious of how much alcohol I consume, whom I'm with, and I know nobody here. I met a girl last night who was just kind as can be and we bonded. She was Colombian, we were talking over Google Translate and obviously had a great time and an instant kind of friendship connection. Unfortunately, she's left the hostel, so tonight you're kind of searching for people to latch on to almost and I'm a person when I vibe with you I vibe hard and I want to hang out with you like all the time so when someone leaves it's kind of like oh I gotta start from scratch again I have to remind myself that it's okay that I am not following the norm and I am not following it's a Saturday night it's a long weekend I should be out partying drinking discoteca it feels lonely to be honest um, something that helped was I called my parents earlier just to have like a full adult conversation in English and I know that sounds funny but I've been speaking a lot of Spanglish as I call it and I haven't been able to connect with people or talk about my adventures except for you, the camera. It was really valuable to call someone and just talk and socialize in a way. I haven't had the opportunity to connect with anyone here beyond last night for a few hours it started over me offering some chocolate. <laughs> we all know food is a great connector for us. I think it's important to acknowledge this and it's okay. Like the only downside is I know if I go to bed in like 30 minutes, people are gonna be coming home at like 12 and one because they just left for dinner. And I once again ate bread and cheese for dinner. I'm just finding myself to be spending money a little bit more than I wanted to and I'm trying to rein back a bit and be conscious so I can extend my travels as long as possible. Final Cut Pro is working again also on my computer, so I might as well get some things done and I'll show you my work setup. So we just use that as a little tripod right now. And here we are, we are editing my Calgary to New York City video. So I will link it up here if you haven't watched it. I've got my suitcase on my bed, which I know you think is gross, but it goes on the floor at night and I always make sure my bed is made. This is my non-body side. I do like that it comes with this little desk area. I've been loving the upstairs roof terrace as a working place, but my computer didn't want to edit properly, of course, when I was up there. So now that I'm back in the box, it's working. I'm on a journey, I'm on a path. I'm trying not to feed into any emotion that I'm feeling very strong and to just let, okay, I feel this way. I feel lonely today. That's okay. How can I fix that tomorrow? It's making me recognize that wherever I stay, I really like to stay around someone. So there is just that hello and to not stay in the Airbnbs by myself. And also in 10 days, I could see my sister. We made it to Malta, finally. Oh. But again, thanks for listening to my TED talk. We're gonna keep editing this video and I hope you watch it, enjoy it, and comment below if you wanna see anything else. <sighs> Some space to bring my anxiety back down. I'm at Park El Retiro. The Spanish people dress a lot better and no one's alone. Also, can we talk about this lighting in this particle board bed? 